We're back. Hey booktube, welcome back to my channel. Let me just like blow off the dust. I don't, I don't want to do the maths to work out uh, how long it's been. What I will say is the last video I put up was like three months ago and I thought I would have these two videos out um, like within about a week or two. I'm getting tired of every video I do having to mention the fact that I've been gone for a while so I'm just not going to do it anymore. It just, just fill in the blanks. So this video is a wrap up and like it's so close to being like a 12 month wrap up which is really bad. If I didn't mention it would you know? So I'm going to be wrapping up um three books today which we're just not going to comment on that number. And bearing in mind I it's been like close to a year for like the first two books on this wrap up. So grains of salt take them if you please. With that said, the first book in my wrap-up is Breach of Peace by Daniel Green. You can probably tell um, by the use of this image that I don't know where any of the physical copies of any of the books I'm going to talk about are, so it's PNG time. So Daniel Green is a well-known sort of sci-fi fantasy reviewer on booktube and kind of beyond as well. Um, this is his um, debut novella. So I follow his channel, I picked this up purely on sort of curiosity, but I was glad that I picked it up because it's definitely different and it's definitely it's not the kind of thing that I would normally gravitate towards but it's quite refreshing and I feel like because it's a novella I don't know how much I can like say without giving things away or spoiling things but it sounds like it's going to open up into what I'm hoping will be like a very new interesting um, universe that's like I don't often see this take in the fantasy that I read. Trying to be vague and also basing this on what I remember from like last year. There are three central characters at the heart of this novella I am not going to try and remember names, but they all work in the same like um, precinct. It's kind of like, like fantasy police. At the very start of the novella, there's been a gruesome sort of mass murder scene at a like like a noble household, and the characters are called in to investigate and see what they can find out. And by following clues, it, it kind of not spirals a little bit, but it does snowball a little bit from there and leads the characters in various different directions that culminate in. <laughs> away we'll say away and it gives me the feeling that this event might be um something that in the main series is sort of either heard on or looked back on but it seems like rather than trying to shoehorn in all this sort of like backstory and explanation into the front of like a novel um it's probably better to get it out of the way with this sort of punchy novella and then you know what you need to know going into the main story that's how i'm viewing this and I have ordered the second book. I believe it's out now. I don't know if my copy's been delivered yet because um, <laughs> I have a lot of books to unbox. But that does kind of tell you that I will be going on with the rest of this series. Um, I find it hard to write novellas because I always feel like I need more time to fall in love with the world and the characters. I will say I feel like this served its purpose quite well um, for what I am perceiving that it's trying to do. Um, I, I don't think I've ever rated any novella higher than a three. I always give them a two or a three, so I'm just going to give this a three. It's based purely on my own personal enjoyment, um, but it does leave me sort of hopeful um, and interested in what the rest of this world might bring. Uh, but yeah, I'm interested to see where the series goes from here. Have I mentioned that I'm filming in my bedroom, by the way? Like, <laughs> this is my bed. It's very pink. It's not normally this pink, but you know. It looks nice on camera so it's fine. Okay moving rather unceremoniously along to I think what ended up being my best book of the year just purely by the fact that I did not read a lot um, but I, I did really like this book also and that book is Dreams of the Dying by Nicholas Lietzel. So I talked a little bit about this one before I think when I hauled it because I think when I hauled it I had already read it. Um, I actually read this, I binged this in like two days on holiday. Um, I actually have like some nice little footage of me here reading it um, in Cornwall just at the edge of the world enjoying a sunrise um, reading my book. Oh it was fantastic um, and I did have a fantastic time just being able to binge read this book. It, I think it just shows that when I have like time to myself and I'm in like a nice environment <laughs> I can in fact read a, a big chunky book like this um, in like a couple days because this this is like I think it's like over 800 pages it, it's thick it's big um, and this is a self-published book what I didn't realize going into it um, but I did get the vibes it gives me video game vibes and um, after doing a little bit more research because I, I bought this this was a cover buy this was purely a cover buy um, because the cover kind of gave me like grimdark like existential cosmic horror but also a little bit of Morrowind vibes. 
they're the vibes I got. And it did feel like that going into it. And I later learned, the reason it felt like Morrowind to me, which I, I think just means that I have like a bloodhound nose for like my favourite RPGs, um, it was actually a mod for Oblivion, the video game, and then later also a mod for Skyrim, the video game, which are in the same uh, series of games as Morrowind. Um, and this novella, I think, takes place I'm guessing after. I have not played those mods because I do not have it. I don't have any of those games on PC. Um, I like to play on console. And so going into this, I just got these really great vibes and I was so excited to read this and I was not disappointed. So this is a Polynesian inspired high fantasy following ex-mercenary Jaspar. So he has been given this invitation to sort of come to like the end of the world to this like semi-fabled like archipelago but it's a very real place and it's because he's got this invitation to meet with like one of their elite. So like even across the world like they are so rich and so powerful that they're sort of considered like almost like godlike beings. So having nothing to lose and having like no idea why he's being summoned, Jaspar finds himself in this very strange place at a very tense and very dangerous time. So this book is told from Jaspar's perspective and we're following like him as an outsider to this culture. Oh and also basically every character is, is kind of morally grey but in like such a realistic way. Like they're all flawed and scared and selfish and stupid and like you'll just have to read about them saying that like they're going to do one thing and then immediately like failing to uphold what they've just said. It's always because of their own personal shortcomings. I don't think very many characters in this book are designed to be either likeable or like unlikable. I feel like a lot like with real people you just have to come to know them and you will either like them or you won't. I do. I like Jaspar. He's a bit shit and a bit pathetic and that's just what I like in fictional men so that's on me. <laughs> yeah so more than that I don't really want to spoil the plot. Um, you can read the synopsis for like I think like a little bit more on like the world and the general overview. For the most part it's just like a lot to do with dreams, a lot to do with trauma. <laughs> yeah even though we only see like a really small slice of the world and it is told from Jaspar's perspective so it's not quite as it's a little bit biased and like it's limited to like his view and like what he's able to see and perceive but it still feels like the world itself like not just the archipelago but like what's beyond that and flashbacks to his past when we see other areas it just feels lush and detailed and I really like the world I'm quite invested in it as like a setting. Speaking of though going through this one of the things I thought it would deliver was something that I've been craving for a very long time and which I'm honestly not totally sure exists and that is high fantasy cosmic horror. So the closest I can think of as an example is um, like the Ideal Masters from the Elder Scrolls series but more, like I want more than that, like that's kind of there but <laughs> it's so minimal what we get and I thought this might deliver on that craving that I just I cannot seem to find anything to like, like fit this niche. So while this isn't high fantasy cosmic horror, um, it is like still the closest I've come in just how it, it feels especially in like some of the segments without spoiling things. Yeah so I did love the tone and the feel of the book and I say that as someone with synesthesia, the feel of the book. <laughs> I don't know how to communicate it to you but it's very strong and very specific and I very much enjoyed it. Um, one thing to note, because um, I know this does sometimes bother people, um, the author is a native German speaker. It's, I, th I think it's just kind of something to bear in mind. I didn't really notice any massive glaring issues. I think it's more just a certain style of writing that comes from going through like a translation process that it's not necessarily always going to be how a native English speaker might write something, not to say that there's anything wrong with the way it's written, I just, to me personally, I just kind of took it as that's the way these characters speak, you know, that's just like the narrative voice um, and I didn't really have an issue with it. I just assumed that was their manner of speaking, it didn't really bother me. I know that some people are quite picky about that, like I know some people really don't like it so I guess if you're like more sensitive to really not liking certain writing styles I would maybe say like maybe read like an excerpt or two and see if you like this. It didn't bother me, I think it's just because I read a lot of translated works that I don't know, <laughs> it didn't really bother me at all. Just something to note. Also, and this isn't a spoiler either, not really, but just regarding the like the length of the book, because it is, I'm pretty sure it's like like eight and a half hundred pages. Like the whole almost like last hundred pages is basically just kind of epilogue. It's just a lot of tying up of loose ends. A little bit like Return of the King. It was a little bit jarring at first getting to that point and not expecting it because when things had finished and I was looking at how much further there was to go, I was like, what is the rest of the book? Even at that point I was still very invested in what was happening. No spoilers, but like the beach scene. I remember being 
so upset about that and I had no one to like vent to. Yeah, no spoilers, but that is exactly the kind of thing that I would do to my characters. And I was devastated, <laughs> but in a good way, sort of in a good way. <laughs> so I gave this a high four stars. Um, as I said, I base everything on personal enjoyment now. It is self-published and like there are like a couple issues here and there, but like, to be honest, I pretty much just overlooked them with a lot of ease. I think I was just enjoying reading this like too much to get caught up on anything that I might maybe be a little bit picky over if I went through with like a fine tooth comb. I honestly just enjoyed this ride so much. I had so much fun reading this. As I say, I think a lot of that is because I specifically really enjoy writing like this and it's hard to describe other than just a feel, but like <laughs> the way that it reminded me of like video games, like IPs that I enjoy, without me knowing that it already had a connection, something there just felt like I could feel it. <laughs> and I do personally just very much enjoy, um, I guess, writing that feels almost like it could be like the Elder Scrolls series. Like video gamey, but not fan fiction y. I don't, it's hard to describe, but it did have a vibe similar to the Elder Scrolls. Like when I read the two Elder Scrolls novels, this is so much more what I wanted to get out of them than what they actually delivered. The novels did not feel nearly as much like the game and the world as this does, but um, yeah, I love it, I loved that. I cannot guarantee you will like these characters, you might go into this and you might despise all of them. Like, I think there's potential for characters in here to make it onto like every single one of them being like on your least favourite character of the year list, but personally I really enjoyed it because I only read one of the book for the rest of the year, this book is technically my best book of 2021. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Okay. Um, and the last book, so yeah, the last book of my wrap up is um, Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Now I do have a whole, oh, I don't know which side things are on. <laughs> on one of these top corners, there'll be a link. Um, but like the video just before this one should be um, a very chaotic, poorly edited reading vlog for this book which got very sidetracked because I kept ranting about things that I either really liked or mostly really disliked about this book. That's not to say it was bad. I'll get it out of the way. I gave this book a straight four stars. Um, if that's what you came here for, then you don't have to listen to me rant anymore. High fantasy vampires, gothic, grimdark. I thought this could be my number one favourite book of all time. The execution was not what I wanted. I should probably say what this book is about. Basically, it's the opposite of Nevernight. This is set in a world where um, the sun has been blotted out. Um, it's kind of like basically always nighttime. It's like very, very dark in the daytime. And then at nighttime, it's just like pitch black. And we'll come back to that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing at my own jokes. Um, the world is overrun and ruled basically by these like clans of vampires, like houses of vampires. And they're kind of encroaching on like the last bastions of humanity and basically trying to take over and just turn the remaining humans into cattle to eat and drink and do their bidding. This book follows Gabriel, or Gabe for short, um, and he is becomes a vampire hunter. Um, they're part of like this religious order of brothers to slay vampires. It switches through time quite a lot, so you follow Gabe when he's um, training at like this. It's like Vampire Academy Magic School. No wait, Vampire Academy is already a thing. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. Um, and then a lot of the narrative also follows him in the future, when things are a lot more grim and a lot more bleak. I don't know if I really want to say more plot-wise than that, because I can't remember exactly which parts might feature in the synopsis and which don't. And I don't want to spoil anything. But yeah, this is like 800 pages of very over-the-top gothic. It's, it's the over-the-top sort of, not quite whimsical gothic, but it's like, it is that kind of tongue-in-cheek. It's very J. Kristoff. If you've read J. Kristoff, you'll know exactly what kind of style I'm talking about. It's like, it's, it's not gothic that's just like naturally gothic, it's like super over the top, like really like hammy, tacky kind of, but like mostly in a good way. Um, I do like the sort of <laughs> incredibly over the top, like over dramatic, melodramatic writing and descriptions and yeah, everything is just extremely, extremely goth. <laughs> I did end up giving this like overall like a four stars. It was fine, it was just, it was not everything it could have been and I feel like the midsection 
drags so much. If you want to go watch the vlog, watch the vlog. I talk in full spoilery details about everything I like and don't like. Um, but what I will say is, I feel like I've discovered that most of Dre Kristoff's way of writing is that all of it, he'll have, like, everything he writes has this band of, like, sassy, talking misfits who all sort of, like, come together and band together to go on a quest or do something or whatever. And I've discovered I hate it, specifically when Jay Kristoff does it. I feel like the characters are just very bland, very one-note, very two-dimensional. None of the characters have any sort of depth or purpose. They don't feel like real characters. They don't... I don't for a second. You couldn't take any of those characters like I don't care about them I'm not interested in them like you're given like it's like a I think in my vlog I said it was like um if you're like playing like a fantasy RPG and you get like the pre-made character sheets it's like do you want to play as the bard who if you think of like if I say picture a stereotypical bard that's what it is and if I say like picture like a stereotypical like I don't know uh, like priest type class that's that's just what it is. They're just exactly as you expect them to be and they don't have any sort of depth or nuance or anything and that's harsh. Um, I feel like the only character that does is literally just Gabe because he's the main character and he has such main character syndrome and it's not so bad. I just wish that some of the side characters would get some more because I just don't care about them at all. I didn't care about any of them. I'm not going to go on about that because we could get into spoiler territory. Although, do you know when you get um, a series and it'll say like, you know, you'll get like, it's this meets this. I know exactly what this is. If I say it's this meets this, it genuinely is almost plot by plot, beat by beat spoilers for the entire book. So I don't know whether I should say it. It's not my fault that it is exactly these two things with barely any difference whatsoever. Skip forward like a minute if you don't want to hear it. Um, yeah, this book is exactly pitch black meets um, the Dawn Guard questline from Skyrim. Heavy on pitch black, less so on the Skyrim Dawn Guard questline. If you know either of those things, hopefully both, you know literally everything you need to know about this book and everything that happens in it, and all the characters. When I realised that, you, I have this epiphany like on camera while I'm filming in the vlog. I feel, I literally feel like I, there's, there's something there, there's content there, like I feel like I need to do like a full video rundown of exactly as it happens in that film and as exactly as it happens in this book. I need people to know that it is that. <laughs> it just is. <laughs> I feel like so much of this book was just a swing and a miss. Like, it, it's good. It's not bad. Um, and I am still going to continue on with the series. It's, like I say, I gave it a four star. It's kind of the same level as my enjoyment of Dark Dawn. There's nothing bad about it. I can still, like, I still like it enough. Just not enough as I want. <laughs> it's like... It had so much potential, like there was so much more that it could have done, it could have given me so much more. I'm interested to see where the series goes, but it depends how, like, Jay Kristoff de decides to, like, take the story and where we go next, because there's definitely going to be more flashback scenes, which I know that I'll definitely like, um, because I loved, um, like, this monastery where they were being trained as vampire hunters, I thought that was fantastic, and I really liked that, and I feel like there was a lot of attention and care done to, like, I don't know, sort of, like, build up, like, the little ways that they worked. I feel like there could have been so much more done with that. I like to feel when I read about somewhere like that, like I can like live and breathe in that place and I can't quite with this, but it's still good enough that I did really enjoy, especially that section. And there were some things that happened towards the end of the book that have piqued my interest and that suit more of what I like as a reader. So I'm definitely interested in going on with this series, which could be the finale or it could be book two of a series, I don't know. So four stars, not a bad book, still disappointed, tentatively hopeful? Yeah, with that said, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I don't keep giving you guys all whiplash with like being on booktube, not being on booktube, being on booktube, not being on booktube. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed this or got something out of it. And maybe I'll see you guys in the next video, which um, I'm going to film right now <laughs> to make sure that I have content. At least one more. At least one more video. So yeah. <laughs> Peace out booktube.